Hello everybody, welcome back. So today, um, it is um, following on from my last video and it's going to be 10 um, books that I, romance books I recommend, but with spoilers. Um, so it's going to, I'm going to talk about the plot, I'm going to read quotes, I'm going to talk about the characters and I'm going to talk about my favourite things of the books. So it is going to be with spoilers. So this is your warning. Um, if you don't want to know what happens in these books, then this is not the video for you. I have done a spoiler-free one, um, which I will link below. Okay. Okay, so the first book, number one, um, Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. Now, this is my favourite, favourite book I have read. Uh, it's just, it is everything. Jordan, the main character, is 19 years old and she is has to move in with her boyfriend's dad. And who, the, who she, she hadn't met till two nights ago and that was at the cinema, not knowing... Um, he was said boyfriend's dad so it, it's good my favorite thing about her is she is not worried about you know um like the wedding or you know having the perfect wedding or having you know the the like having it all she just wants and i quote the life she just wants you know the house the the man and the you know coming home to the kids and stuff so it is it's so lovely. My one of my my favorite bits is um when they finally get together. <gasps> the spice. <gasps> but also their connection the two of them and how they both they both want what each other wants. They both want you know the life, the house, the kids, the car, you know the the p white picket fence. So um it is is so good. My favorite bit is right at the end when they um when after they've kind of gone their separate ways and broken up he goes and finds her in this motel where he's working and he goes sorry baby it took me so long and she goes yes you took so long and it's just it's just you know it like none of it matters they're just you know together and it's just them and then he when he asks her to marry him and she has the um the rose engagement ring and it's just oh it's so lovely and I what I also really really like is um so Pike is the boy is um the like, boyfriend's dad and the, her and Jordan they end up together if that wasn't clear I kind of skipped a few bits I just love the book so much but um the son the um the first boyfriend whose name for um escapes me now he's not that important he's not the character i like that's why i don't remember his name um what i like about him is he's so understanding about it and how he just wants them to be happy and there's a lovely scene but after um after he's joined i love the bit but after he's joined the army and he's done his um what's it um kind of um enrollment or whatever you know his train and like initial training i like when they um when they come back and um when he comes back and he says i know dad i know you love me and he lists all the things he knows dad's done for him like um taking a second module down the house to um send them to college and um oh, what's it called and um you know, losing out a contract job so he could, you know, go and watch him play ba basketball and stuff. It's just, it's so love uh, baseball, and it's so lovely, and it's just, and then he is so supportive of him and um, of dad and his ex girlfriend being together. And I love, I just love the epilogue where um, where uh, Jordan and Pike's um, son is um, is there and he's also sleeping with um oh with the um with the um the first boyfriend you know pike's 
oldest son um, and they're just it's so lovely that they're the same age and stuff I'm sorry I didn't feel like I explained this over but if you know the book then hopefully you'll know what I'm talking about but I just it's just so lovely okay so number book number two Twisted Games um, by Anne I'm sorry I'm not sure how you pronounce that so um, what I love about this um, with Bridget and for those who don't know, um, she's a princess, he's her bodyguard. Need I say more? But um, in it, it picks up where Twisted, Twisted Love's epilogue ended, where Bridget is announced that she's going to be now heir to the throne. Whereas before it was her brother, but her uh, brother abdicate, not like, like set aside, kind of abdicated, be, so he could marry the woman he loves because she wasn't of royal blood. Now, that that takes you to about halfway that kind of build up then about halfway um because it is quite a slow burn um about halfway it picks up where she is now becoming or becomes ruler or kind of on her way to become a ruler of um the town of the town of the country so she then starts seeing the bodyguard and he is uh, also a commoner and not of royal blood so they then decide to fight the um the rule or the like constitution that states you know that they have that they can't be together which is really lovely but it kind of that begs the question why the brother didn't do that but that's the only flaw I can see in it because it's so lovely and let me tell you some of the scenes wow 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 okay book number three is book number three in the twisted series and this is twisted hate and this um follows on um from the first two this is um about Jules and um Josh Chen now Josh is the brother of um of the girl from the first book I, and um Jules is one of the friends you know if, um for those that don't know it's four friends in each so one book for each um girl and they hate each other now the reason this was a long book and I didn't like the first book in this series just because of the violence in it I really did not like that and also the um the um the whole thing with her parents and stuff I really did not like that but what I like about this book is one it follows on and you see the aftermath but from a different side but two Jules and Josh's relationship they keep it I mean the spice wow but also they keep it very private and they agree not to tell anybody and in fact my favourite thing about it is nobody finds out about their relationship till they decide, you know, that they want to be in an exclusive relationship, which is right near the end of the book. And then they go and tell his sister, who is one of Jules's best friends, um, and they, you know, they still, everybody else still thinks they hate each other, but the fact that they, um, um, that... I really liked that they were able to announce it, you know, on their own terms and figure out what they were first. And, you know, you didn't have the, you know, stereotype, the, you know, the normal predictable storyline of, you know, people finding out and then them breaking up and, you know. Not that they didn't, you know, have, you know, the normal breakup, but what I liked is that they came back together and then they were able to announce that they were together. And that's how this, um, his sister found out rather than, you know, them just it being like shown to her or announced or you know the normal stuff so that's why I like did like this book okay book number four is terms and conditions um book number two in the dreamland series now the reason I picked this one for this list is I really like the relationship between um, Declan and Iris. Now, Declan, he has a um, what's it called? A um, has been left for, the, for those who don't know. The is part of the Dreamland Billionaire series, 
and his three brothers and they've each been left ta as tasked by their granddad in his will in order to gain their inheritance. Now, Declan's is to, he has to get married and have a baby um, in order to become CEO, which is not a storyline I'm a big, not something I'm a big fan of because it is kind of telling you what to do and what society says, but pushed aside that, um, what I like is Iris is his assistant and they become, they get in, you know, to a fake marriage. Now, normally I hate, hate fake relationships because of all the lying and the messing, you know, they can't keep track and then it turns real and then people find out it's fake and it's just, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of that. But I really like this book. Number one is because his brothers, they know that it's fake which I like. Number two, her, um, you'd, I, not a lot of the story covers, you know, them, like, pretending to be a couple, if that makes sense. You know, when they go out to, you know, events with friends and stuff. There's not a lot of scenes like that. What it does cover is them at home and them in the office and them, you know, figuring out what they are to each other now, which I really love. And I think that's one of the reasons I like this book so much is because they um they kind of like ha don't have all that messing that you get in other you know fake relationship books which I just I really don't like. But Iris, she loves her high heels which I love. I also love um the when they go on the um fake honeymoon. But it's not really fake, it's just like, well it is fake, but um, they go on a safari to um, Africa and in it they have this, like on it they have this massive fight and then she goes, well, I'm so tired of putting everybody else's needs before mine, I quit. So she quits as his assistant and then he goes over there. He goes over and finds her and he apologises and then he plans like this three day, like he sends their trip by three days and he doesn't work which is so lovely and also then he uh, makes sure to find, to make sure to wake her up when her, like the animal she wants to see comes out, you know, on the safari, like where they're like staying, you know, on those like huts or whatever, you know, when you're in the, what's it, it's not a field but you know, like, you know what's the word, like, land, which I like, I also, um, which I think is really, really good, I also like that, um, how their kind of relationship progresses, and, which is, which is nice, but also, um, what I love is the ending, where he, um, does all, um, does all the stuff she says she wanted like he finds her the most perfect house with the perfect greenhouse because she loves plants and then the um the um proposal he acts out her favorite proposal and um she he goes to i think maybe six or seven dog shelters to find the one dog she says she wanted this massive big fluffy thing so that's so sweet that's what i really like i really like this it's so it's so lovely. So that's one of, maybe, the, I hope I explained that well, that's one of the reasons I love it so much. And I also love you get to see their relation, the relationship of De Declan with his brothers, which is good. So that's, um, that was book number four. Book number five is 1% of you by Michelle Gross. Now, the reason I love this book so much is because of him and I forgot his name now Elijah Elijah and he um he moves across the street from this single mum who has a three-year-old and is pregnant with her second child and they they don't like it she doesn't like him to begin with and then when she's in labor he helps get her to the hospital and then she realizes, you know, she's he's kind of seen her at his um, kind of kind of her weakest, most vulnerable moment, um, and where she needed him, and he stood up, like um, 
you know, what's it, like, yeah, stood up. So he, um, so he, um, help, yeah, helps her to the hospital. Then they become friends, and he starts hanging out with them, and him and, oh, him and the daughter, oh, they're so cute. They're so cute together, and he starts helping her, starts looking after her. He then also then, um, one of my favourite bits is when, um, he runs a tattoo parlour, and that's when he, um, when he brings her to the tattoo parlour to get a tattoo, and her dad is so upset about it, it's just so funny, when I got, um, when I got my tattoos, <laughs> my dad was upset about it too, I'm just trying to show you the, oh, it's not showing on the camera, yeah, yeah, so that's one of mine, when, um, yeah, so I thought that was really funny, and um, I just, I love the ending, where they don't have, you know, that kind of, you know, that predictable split. They just, they just move from strength to strength. I mean, it's quite a slow burn, but I, I really love the ending. And then in the epilogue, when they, when they have their baby together, and they go to the hospital, and they're just all crying because they're so happy. It's just so lovely, so lovely. So... Now on to, there's the physical books I got, now on to the Kindle books, if I remember. So book number one, if I remember, I'm trying to do them in the same order as the last video. Um, so my apologies if I made a mistake. So the first one was Mr. Masters. Let's see if I can find Mr. Masters, so I can show you the cover. I like having the cover to show. So Mr. Masters. Now he is just wow. So um, the, it follows a nanny um, who's moved over from Australia. Um, she's coming here to the UK for a year um, to nanny for this person who she thought was a woman, but turns out to be a man who is a widower. Widower, and he um, he has two kids. A I think she's sixteen or seventeen year old daughter and a six six seven year old son and he has a very strained relationship with them he's quite you know he's a grumpy he's a grumpy man and it's about them evolving together now i love i really love how they um they um oh how she helps him with the kids, helps them grow their relationship, also helps his oldest daughter who is struggling with her uh, mental health because she's being bullied, how he, she protects her, how she fights for her, so that's really lovely. But also I love the ending where they, um, where they, um, where they had their split, you know, the split, and they've come back together and then he asked her to marry him. And then they announce it to the kids, and they're just so happy. And but the son is worried that um, he she's gonna leave every time you know dad gets grumpy, and he's she's just like, no, that's just how dad did it, it, dad is. It's fine, <laughs> and it's so it's so lovely. And then I love in the epilogue how you you get multiple epilogues, and you get like mama there pregnant with their first baby. And then mama they're pregnant with their second, and then mama and they've just had their third baby together so it's so it's so good I really really did enjoy it and that what that was so good okay the um next one is I think I'm not sure if I did the next this one next but it is the takeover by TSL Swan now this is part of the Miles High series and oh my goodness, it is just Tristan Mars is my favourite of the Mars brother. He is so lovely, and there was one line that it just made me fall in love with him. So it's about um, this Tristan. He's a you know one of the Mars brothers, and he is in charge of acquisitions in the company. So he approaches this woman, um, t and she wants to, he wants to take over her late husband's. Sorry, I got a cold. Late husband's, um, her late husband's marketing business. And she said, she turns him down and she says no. Because she wants to leave it, um, you know, to her son. She's got three boys. 
um, aging from 18 down to 9 so quite a big gap and um, she says no because she's running the company for them so then um, a few weeks later or something they meet up at a marketing event you know, and they sleep together and then he takes her to Paris for the weekend because <sighs> why wouldn't you go to Paris for the weekend oh, I wish I had a billionaire to take me to Paris for the weekend but um, she, um, they agree to, you know, she says this is only, th I can only do this weekend because, um, as she puts it, three hearts, um, you know, come join to with mine, but he goes, no, uh, he wants more, so he, like, pursues her, he turns up at the house, um, at her house, and her, and her sons, oh, they, they, they're so funny, they, um, they had found men's underwear in her luggage. So then, um, so then <laughs> he stands up and they start, you know, hitting him with the pants and stuff, which was really funny. And then, um, so then there's that. But then, the, in the next few days, um, her oldest son actually interviews for a, um, assistant, I think maybe intern, I'm not sure, I think he gets paid for it. Um, but his position under Tristan, working for Tristan, which, which he then gets. And it makes Claire, you know, very nervous. But then um, Claire and Tristan, they um, Claire's, I don't think I said her name before, but Claire's, um, you know, the one, um, agree to um, start seeing each other in secret, yeah, not tell the boys. But he goes over and he goes and he spends time with the boys. Her youngest, Patrick, is very, very excited. Um, she, He really likes Tristan. The oldest one, Harry, now... This is where it gets funny. He is a 13-year-old boy, and he is very mischievous. And, for example, one time, he uh, Tristan is driving home, and his very new expensive Aston Martin breaks down. And it is because Harry has filled the engine with sugar. He's one of a kind, top-of-the-range, exclusive, only one built Aston Martin, he put sugar in the engine, which was hilarious. <laughs> and then, um, which was so funny. And then, you know, Tristan retaliates with, you know, um, the internet not working in the house, or, um, or, or, or all the tires of Harry's bikes have been stolen and stuff. So, it's it's going back and forth, and then, you know, building an understanding with each other because Harry's, you know is wary of you know this new guy coming into their lives which is so lovely um and then <laughs> another thing is um he puts is it hair loss cream he puts hair loss cream in his shampoo and Tristan shampoo and he loses his hair but which was good and then there's this um so that was good and then they all kind of um they get past that and then it goes into their relationship and them together for a good chunk i think nearly a year it covers where they're in you know a solid relationship and the five of them are becoming a family together and one day harry goes missing you know the middle son he goes missing and they go searching from everywhere and he turns up and claire is really really angry but it turns out he, uh, Harry was trying to, which Tristan finds out, Harry was trying to get to the graveyard to see his, where, dad's, where his dad's buried. So Tristan takes him after school one day. He goes and he takes um, Harry to the, um, to the graveyard to see his dad. And they all they smoke a cigar together because that's what Harry's dad liked to do. And unbeknownst to them, Claire follows them there and sees them together. And she gets very upset and emotional about replacing her husband, which, you know, is understandable. So, um, so, yes, which is understandable. So then that's when the, the best friend, you know, the split comes in and they break up. Can you tell this is one of my favourite books? Because <laughs> I'm telling the whole thing. This is what, um... I think between, uh, this might be tied with Birth to Girl, but Birth to Girl I prefer because um, um, Jordan was more relatable and I, Pike was more relatable as well. Um, whereas Tristan, as fancy and as lovely as he is, is 
not quite as relatable, if that makes sense. Where was I anyway? Where was I now? Oh yeah, so they've gone away. And Tristan, he goes and he uh, goes to France for six months or something. Um, he takes a, like, one of a position working there. Anyway, one night he's in this hotel and he gets a call from the concierge that he has guests. And it turns out it's Harry and Patrick who have stolen <laughs> the credit card Tristan left and got it on the plane to France by themselves to go and get him so that he would be so he can be their dad oh, which is so lovely and of course Claire as you would be is so angry at them so her and the oldest son fly out to France and then that's when they build you know their relationship together and then it goes cuts to them and they are at Christmas he um, he takes the boys ring shopping so that he can pick out an engagement ring which I just love that's one of the reasons I love it so much is that he includes the boys in it he like understands that they're such a big part of it and then um, and then he proposes to her and that's when Claire tells him uh, that she is pregnant which is so lovely and in um, and then there is a whole book of epilogue epilogue book for um, the Miles High Club and in that then it covers them having their three kids together which I love as well so that was I forgot what number we're on now but that was the takeover which I just loved okay so now we are on is it our way by um, but another TSL Swan book if I can find it our way So this is our way. It's about a doctor and a nurse who um, who become best friends, um, and even though, uh, but he and he is um, gay and she is straight, and they become best friends. They become insepar inseparable. And I was afraid when I first started reading it that it was gonna be like Will and Grace and I mean that when they become not that I don't love Will and Grace because I do and I think it's absolutely hilarious and such a brilliant show and there are so many things I love about that show but I do think sometimes I do think Will and Grace's relationship is codependent on each other in our way I, I didn't think it was like that I felt that they it was more because if you haven't read the book, it's about them falling in love and then becoming a couple. Which is very, very different from Ling Grace. So that's how it's different. It's not the same kind of relationship. Whereas that's what I was afraid of, I was reading. But it's not about that. It's about him realising that he, he takes a long time to figure out who he wants to be with and love. And... It doesn't matter, you know, gender doesn't come into it, he just loves the person, which I do believe. I do believe that it's down to the person and gender has nothing to do with it personally. Um, but what I love about it is how they grow together and support each other and how they realise that over their 10 years of friendship, they've been coming to this moment where they both realise they want the same things. And it's, it's just it's so lovely. And I love how it ends with her, um, you know, pregnant with, I think, baby number three at home. And he comes home and all the kids are so happy to see him. And I really, really love that. So that's our way. And now the next one is... Wait For It by um, Marina... Sapata. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. But you can see. Now this is about a uh, woman um, who is raising her two nephews. Uh, both, I think maybe one's five, one's twelve maybe. Maybe he's a bit younger. Um, and it's about, they've just moved into this new house, into this new neighbourhood because she's finally saved up enough money to get a house. She's only, I think, 30. And she, um, what's it called? She um she is um you know trying to 
make things work, you know, for them. She, um, she, she signs them up to baseball anyway, and then meets their baseball coach, and he turns out to be their neighbour across the street, and it's all about them falling in love and them loving each other. Now, the reason this was on my list is because I really, what I liked about it was that she stood her own ground. She was, um, the main character. She was, um... I'm sorry, I've forgot her name now. But she was a, a main character, and she she knew where she stood. She supported her her two nephews. She loved them. I mean, she absolutely loved them as if they were her own. And she also um, came from a very strict um, um, family. And her mum didn't like, you know, her new love interest who had tattoos all down her his arms and everything but she um but that didn't I like she didn't let her stop him from seeing him she you know got what she she went after what she wanted and it's just a really lovely heartwarming story and um, one of my favorite scenes is when she goes to one of her nephew's baseball matches and she gets in trouble with one of the mums because her shorts are too short which is just ridiculous why would why does it matter what someone you know wears um you know which do you know to watch baseball because they're shorts aren't they at the end of the day but it was just it was so funny it was getting so ridiculous just because this mum this other mum didn't like her so it, it was good that's one of the reasons i liked it you know she stood up for herself okay so number the last one on the list is beautiful sinner by sarah kate now this follows a um sorry this follows book number two in this series and this follows the second sister and she's gone to Ireland on a trip and she gets stranded there by this really you know awful guy um and she then works um in the motel in the hotel even um to you know earn money so she can get you know her trip back but also like you know figure out who she is and the hotel is run by um this woman whose sister is a priest who also lives in the hotel and um works does some work on the grounds of the hotel when he's not doing his um priestly duties he is a catholic priest and therefore has taken a vow of uh, celibacy and it is about them growing together and how he um his str not str like his struggle with doing god's work but also um you know trying to you know you can't help who you fall in love with um and his about them being together and it is what it is is and I completely understand that this book might not be for you um, because it obviously does, you know, um, does talk about his relationship with God. And he does, I mean, he does eventually break his peace, um, priest, his vows that he took when he became a priest. So I do understand that if this relationship is not, f um, this book is not for you. But what I like is at the end of it, they go back to this to the local village and he's still a part of the church he's still part of the community i mean everybody in the church understands you know why he's why he stepped down as the priest and why he left that and now he's you know doing what he does for the hotel and everything and it's just it's so lovely and them having their um it covers their ch them having them children and stuff it's just oh it's so good and Oh, excuse me, sorry. I'll edit this better. <laughs> and I also, um, in one of the, there's a scene where she tells um, him in the past that she's had an abortion and he's completely, you know, understanding of her situation and stuff and it's just so lovely. And that is like a warning there. I mean, if that's not something that you want to read, but... Let me tell you the spice. Wow, it is, but it is, it is a really good book, and I really, really did enjoy it. And it wasn't, you know, 
it wasn't about, you know, the fact that he was a priest and she wasn't, you know, when she was, you know, it wasn't that, it didn't, like, it wasn't, that wasn't that at all. I mean, to begin with, I mean, afterwards they have, you know, their scenes together in the church, but, um, but it is, um, it begins with them, you know, just figuring out who they are, which is what I like. So I'm sorry if that turned into a bit of a tangent, but I hope you enjoyed that. You can tell which books I enjoyed more because I knew more of the pl plot, but because that's probably because I've reread them like four times because I've read The Takeover and The Birthday Girl a lot. But I mean, I um, so that's my opinion, that's completely my opinion, and I'm not saying whether I'm not you know this is my opinion so if you um, disagree with it that's fine and if some of the books are not for you and I'm tried to because obviously some of these books they deal with very deep issues very difficult issues and something I'm definitely not an expert on and something I'm definitely not um definitely not um um, what's it called? Oh, sorry, I'm definitely not an expert on and I'm definitely not a, um, you know, saying that this is the only opinion and mine's, I've said it so it must go. This is just what I feel about these books. So I, because, um, I know that sometimes, um, it comes across like, when we watch videos like this, that, because someone says it then that's the way it is but that's not the case anyway this is going off on a bit of a tangent so i'm sorry about that but um i hope you enjoyed this video please come back for, um subscribe and please come back for the next one and thank you so much for watching let me know if there's any videos that you would like to watch or any videos or books that you would recommend or what were your favorite books out of the list i would really love to know that so please comment below and I will see you next time. Thank you.